everybody good afternoon can you all hear me and see the screen properly and clearly everybody please tell me yes or no on the chat box come on everybody can you all hear me and see the screen properly and clearly tell me yes or no on the chat box there was a small technical glitch hope it will not affect our uh, classes in between yes so let's get started with the super amazing session the final part on the chapter morphology of flowering plants done everybody so today we would be discussing about the description of three different families from our ncrt in our ncrt we have to study about three different families okay three different plant families and today so we will be discussing about those three families specially clear so let's get started before moving on those who are watching the session right now don't forget to hit the like button do share it's on biology good afternoon bhumi anushka anantu everybody yes this is our telegram group t.me slash neat underscore bio point where daily session updates and regular discussions happen so for those who have not become a part of this telegram group don't forget to join the telegram group right now right here itself this is the schedule for the day we already completed the rank booster series sharp at 7 am 9:15 pm we had body fluids and circulation lecture now we have morphology 5 pm for neat 2021 you have a special guaranteed plus 4 mark session and at 7 pm neat 2023 students has an exam on living world and biological classification so we have successfully completed eight chapters sorry not eight nine chapters and, and tomorrow i will be starting with a new chapter if network doesn't interfere in our session right now okay the ncrt series for all the remaining chapters which we have not taken yet would be discussed in the next coming week done everybody you can go to our channel and go to the playlist session you can search out the video you will find the entire playlist of the already completed nine chapters give me hearts on the screen everybody if my audio is clear and my video on the screen is clear yes 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 thank you so much so tomorrow sharp at 5 pm we will be having the guaranteed plus 4 marks for neat 2021 on the animal breeding so let's get started with today's super amazing class and today we are going to discuss about the floral formula what is our today's topic today's topic is the floral formula if there is a breakage in the audio please do tell me okay so guys what is a floral formula what is a floral formula yes we are going to discuss about what is it first of all and then we will be moving on with the what in detail about the families clear so what is a floral formula it is actually the numerical representation of the relative position number of floral parts in relation to the mother axis or the inflorescence axis okay that is the arrangement look how many sepals are there how many petals are there how many calyx that is how many calyx how many corolla how many andrisium how many gynesium so the representation the numerical representation for all these parts okay along with the relative position and number of their floral parts in relation to the mother axis is known as the floral formula it is actually floral formula are symbolic as well as numeric representation of different parts of a flower are you getting my point just you have to write it calyx five in number corolla six in number whatever it can it depends okay look andrisium may be three in number so you can write a3 that means andrisium is it clear is it clear for everybody can you hear my audio clearly done everybody yes it renders the information on the type and number of organs symmetry type and level of ovary presence of fusion 
an inter relationship of different floral parts that is corolla calyx andrisium and gynesium simply i will tell you the uh, definition for that that is a floral formula is actually a representation a numerical representation which helps you to identify how many number of floral whorls or how many number of calyx corolla andrisium gynesium and what is their position to identify all these things we are using the floral formula so listen to me very carefully before we write about the floral formula this is how you indicate the floral formula okay this is how you indicate the floral formula okay so before we write the floral formula we have to identify uh, we have to study what is this br what is this symbol what is this symbol what is p3 plus 3 in the, inside the bracket what is a3 plus 3 without a bracket what is g with 3 inside the bracket and an underline in between so you have to discuss let's start one by one i would be telling you only those things which are necessary for your exam what do you mean by br br is a symbol that is used for the bracteate condition br is a symbol that is used for the bracteate condition ebr stands for a bracteate condition okay br stands for bracteate condition ebr stands for a bracteate condition these are not required okay bracteolate is not required epicalyx is not required a bracteolate is not required if suppose zero is written if there is a zero that means there is no walls present that means absence of the particular wall suppose if in a floral formula if you can identify a zero what do you mean by a zero a zero means that it is a female flower that is andrisium is not present suppose if in a flower that is a is infinity then there is indefinite number of that particular floral part done is it clear for everybody have you understood have you understood the symbol for the bracteate embracteate and the absence of a floral wall and all yes guys if you are using a symbol like this if you are using a symbol like this it means an actinomorphic condition guys what do you mean by actinomorphic condition what do you mean by an actinomorphic condition it is actually a symmetry right so what is actinomorphic actinomorphic means it is a radial symmetry right it is the radial symmetry so if the plant or the flower is showing a radial symmetry then you have to use this symbol if the flower is showing a bilateral symmetry you have to use the symbol of a percentage that is the zygomorphic condition is it clear for everybody have you understood that yes so guys for calyx or the sepals you have to use the symbol k for corolla or petals you will use a symbol as c for perianth or tepals you will use a symbol as p andrisium or stamens you will use the symbol as a gynesium or carpel use the symbol as g for a bisexual flower that is guys this is a male this is a female so both male and female together you will call it as the bisexual condition if it is indicating a male flower then only this if it is a female flower then you can use this staminate flower pistillate flower give me thumbs up on the chat box if up to this is clear have you understood all the symbols over here these are all very easy symbols these are all very easy simple have you understood have you understood this is super important i will provide the pdf of this session so listen very very carefully in the class okay actinomorphic the symbol zygomorphic percentage symbol calyx k corolla c andrisium before andrisium yes perianth p andrisium a gynesium g these are the main symbols used in the floral formula next we have to move with something more okay we have to move with something more guys simply if it is given like k5 simply if it is given like k5 
five. What does that indicate? What does that indicate? Simply like K five. What is K? K stands for calyx, right? K stands for calyx. So K simply written it means aposepalus or it is polysepalus. Who is gonna tell me what is meant by the polysepalus condition? Who is gonna tell me what is the polysepalus condition? What is this polysepalus? The sepals are free. They are not united. The each sepals are free. Right? Have you got it? What do you mean by polysepalus condition? Yes, the sepals are free in nature. Okay. So that is there are five sepals which are absolutely free. That is why you indicated it like this. It is like this. Okay. K at the bottom of K you have to write five. Whereas K along with five inside a bracket that, that indicates gamosepalous condition. What do you mean by gamosepalous condition? The sepals are united. So five sepals are there that are united in nature guys i am not able to understand how much i am reaching to you so please do respond to me with the chat box i hope you don't know about this polysepalus gamosepalus have you forgot all those things just tell me yes or no on the chat box then only i will be able to tell you what is polysepalus what is gamosepalus and all are you posting any messages just tell yes or no on the chat box i'm not receiving any of your comments is it my network problem that I'm not receiving any of your comment or uh, you are not posting any comments? Yes, okay. So have you understood what is polysepalus and what is gamosepalus? For polysepalus condition, you have to write it simply like this. For gamosepalus condition, you can have to indicate the number of sepals inside a bracket. Exactly like that. If the corolla is simply, that is they are free, polysepalus or apopetalus in polypetalus or apopetalus in condition, simply like this. If the corolla is fused, then you have to write it like this. Five petals, gamosepalus, that is five uh, petals are there which are united to each other. Clear? And, and just understand p stands for perian if perian and andresium are connected to each other we have studied this term right in day before yesterday's class not in yesterday's class epiphyllus and epipetalus sometimes andresium can get connected with the petal or sometimes andresium can get connected with the perian or tepals if it is like that you will draw a like this you will draw a structure like this. That is perianth and andresium are connected. Such a condition is known as epiphyllous stamen. If the calyx and sorry, if the corolla and andresium are fused together, then you will call them as the epipetalous condition. Got it? Got it, everybody? Yes. If the andresium is just three, you will write it as three. That is three stamens which are free in nature. A2 plus two. What do you mean by A2 plus two? Two bundles. Diadelphus condition. Diadelphus condition. That is they are arranged into two bundles. The stamens are arranged into two bundles. Yes. Next. What do you mean by eight? Now, higher adult nine stamens united and nine stamens united to form one bundle and one other bundle. Guys, this is that's a small. That is, guys. This is not the word over here. That is nine plus one. Nine inside the bracket plus one. Okay. Now I think the audio is okay, right? In 
okay a and rhesium then dia adelphus nine stamens united so nine inside the bracket plus one other bundle a nine plus one clear if it is a sterile stamen you have to use the word like that a zero if the gynesium is uh, what is sterile g zero okay so guys if it is a semi inferior ovary if it is a semi inferior ovary that is the perigynous condition perigynous condition that is semi inferior ovary then you have to use a symbol like this then indicate number of gynesium is 2 3 or whatever if it is an inferior ovary what is an inferior ovary that is the epigynous condition epigynous condition then you have to use a symbol like this g and the underline is on the hyphen is on the top of g if it is a superior ovary then you have to indicate it like this clear is it clear for everybody is it clear if it is superior the underline should come in the below of g if it is an inferior ovary it should come on the top if it is semi inferior it is along okay a 10 plus 1 that's actually given over here is wrong look at the statement there are total of 10 stamens okay there are a total of 10 stamens and how is it arranged in the dia adelphus condition that is it is arranged like something over here and something over here okay they have arranged something over here plus something over here must be arranged that is a dia adelphus condition and it is 10 in number so how is it arranged? Nine stamens united to form one bundle. That is, nine stamens are there which are united to form one bundle. Along with one bundle is free. So nine plus one, nine plus one is ten, right? Nine is, it is arranged in a diadelphus condition. That is, nine stamens are united and one is free. Clear? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. So guys, before let me take out a blank slide to tell you something important. Yes. So listen, guys, in our textbook, in our textbook, we have to study about three different families. How many families we have to study? We have to study three different families. Okay. The first family which we are going to come across in our textbook is the Fabaceae family. Okay. What is the first family? Fabaceae family. That is the P family. Fabaceae family or the P family. Clear? Second family which we have to study is the Solanaceae family. What is Solanaceae family? That is the potato family. Solanaceae family means the potato family. Listen very, 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 very carefully. Okay. And the third family which we have to study is the Liliaceae family. Liliaceae. That is lily family. All the plants related with the lily plants comes under the lily ACA family. Have you understood the three terms correctly? Can you repeat these three terms along with me on the chat box? What are the three terms? Have you understood the what are the three different families which we are going to tell? Can you please repeat it along with me? Please do repeat it along with me. Yes. First one is the Fabaceae. First one is the Fabaceae. Second one is the Solanaceae. And third one is the Liliaceae. Yes, Fabaceae, Solanaceae and Liliaceae. Guys, sometimes in your exam, okay, sometimes in your exam, the question may be coming like, Okay, listen very carefully. Sometimes in your NEET exam, the question may be coming like, I'm just telling an example. 
your question may be coming like they will be giving this particular floral formula to you they will be giving you this floral formula to you this is the floral formula okay they will be giving you this floral formula and they will be asking you to which of the families floral formula is given in the question or the floral formula which is given in the question is of which of the following plants or which of the following families they will be asking you okay they will be asking you to which of the following families does the floral formula belong to so in such a condition i will tell you something easy to remember okay something easy to remember only if the question comes in the way which i tell told you right now okay the way in which the question you can answer this only if the question comes in the way which i have already told you guys if the number of gynecium we are studying first is the fabaceae second solanaceae and third is the liliaceae if the number of gynecium if the number of gynecium is 1 then it is the floral formula of fabaceae if the floral formula contains if the number of gynecium is 2 it is solanaceae if it is 3 in number then it is liliaceae family have you understood the chord everybody have you understood the chord everybody just tell me thumbs up on the chat box or yes or no on the chat box have you understood the chord of remembering if the floral formula is given in the question and is asked you to write the example this is a very easy way by which you can easily understand yes that's where you will you can easily take it down okay only these three families for your exam will come as the exam uh, as a question sometimes they will be asking a question which of the following four options represents the correct formula of fabaceae correct formula of fabaceae at that point of time also you can use if the number of gynecium is 1 it is fabaceae 2 solanaceae 3 liliaceae so let's move with the very first family that is the fabaceae before we study something we have to understand the characteristic features that is fabaceae as you see on the background it is the pea family so pea plants belongs to this family pea plants belongs to this family you don't have to study all these things by heart in each slide what all things you have to by heart i will highlight it again after explaining i will highlight it again after explaining to you done so pea plants belongs to this family this plant is either a tree shrub or a herb the root shows root nodules because it is a leguminous plant the leaves are pinnately compound arranged in alternate phyllotaxy the inflorescence is racemose type and the flowers are bisexual and zygomorphic the flowers are bisexual and zygomorphic guys what is the symbol for bisexual this is the symbol for bisexual what is the symbol for zygomorphic zygomorphic you will use the symbol as percentage right this is the symbol for actinomorphic and this is the symbol for zygomorphic right so zygomorphic the percentage symbol so what is you have to by heart over here i will be telling you now that's the most important thing which you have to get by heart over here is the p family okay i'll use some other color so that you will get it easily it is a p family then point number 1 the inflorescence is racemose type 2 flowers are bisexual and zygomorphic only these three points you have to take down in your text book or notebook if you are studying right now with the textbook make sure you underline in the textbook these three points along done moving on next the calyx has five sepals fused that is a gamosepalous how will you write that the calyx has five sepals fused tell me guys whether brackets are needed or not brackets are needed or not tell me condition is gamosepalous that is fused sepals tell me whether i have to put bracket around this five or not tell me everybody have to answer everybody have
have to answer. Yes, brackets are needed because it is a gamosepalous condition. Abhijit, are you here? I'm not receiving any of your chats. So guys, gamosepalous. Okay, gamosepalous condition with imbricate each situation. Exactly like that, the corolla has five petals, free petals, that is polypetalous. So there is no need of any brackets. So yes, you can simply write it, C5. So for Fabaceae family, how many sepals and petals are there? Five sepals are there. Five petals are there. The petals are unequal in size. We already studied that the estivation in Fabaceae will be vexillary estivation. Right? Vexillary estivation like this. The estivation will be like this. So the largest petal will be the vexillum and the smallest petal is the keel. Moving on to the next one, guys. Moving on to the next one. Okay. Moving on to the next one. So guys, we know that the it is shows vexillary estivation. It shows vexillary estivation. So the corolla will be arranged or the petals will be arranged like there would be a single large petal which is free. There would be two different petals and the last two petals will be fused. Right? So how will you write it? One is free plus the next inner two are also free plus the last two petals are fused together. The last two petals are fused together. Exactly like that. The andresium has 10 stamens arranged in a diadelphus condition. Diadelphus that is arranged in two bundles. That is A, nine stamens are fused plus one is free. Finally, we are going to combine all these things together. Okay, calyxes five which are fused. Andresium nine plus one diadelphus condition. Yes, gynesium is monocarpillary. Unilocular ovary is superior with the marginal placentation. Marginal placentation that is, we know that there is monocarpillary. So one gynesium which is superior. So the underline have to be given below. Clear seeds are non-endospermic. And the most important question comes from this part is like, okay, comes in this part is like, what? Yes, I'll tell after that. Okay. The examples also can be asked in the exam as very, very important question. Okay. So the examples of Fabaceae, you have to sit and by heart all these examples. Pulses, example as gram, arhar, sem and moong, soya bean. Edible oil, soya bean and groundnut. As dye, you will use indigo ferra. Fiber, sunhem, fodder, sesbeni and trifolium. Ornamentals, lupin and sweet pea, sweet pea. Medicine is mulati. We will use mulati as a medicine. I will try to make a chord for you as soon as possible. Otherwise, you can use your own native local language. And you can use some other chord for studying this. Have you got all the points? So guys, in your exam, this is the floral formula. So guys, this is the floral formula. Floral formula. And guys, this is a floral diagram. This is a floral formula. This is the floral diagram. Guys, are you getting my point? Yes. What is this? Psygomorphic. What is this? Bisexual condition. Calyx 5 fused. Corolla 1 plus 2 plus 2 fused. Vexillary estivation. Diadelphus andresium 9 fused plus 1. And gynesium, which is superior gynesium, so underline on the below, 1. Guys, all these numbers are written like this. Calyx 5, Corolla 1 plus 2 plus, okay, subscript, you have to write it. 9 plus 1, gynesium number 1. Done. So please see to this diagram also, you will easily get it. Okay. The axillary situation, guys, check. One large petal, two small petals, and the large last two petals are fused together. And 
Nyan andresium. This red color which I am drawing right now is the andresium. So this andresium nyan plus one. Clear everybody with this? Is it clear for you? Monocarpillary. So only one carpel. Is it clear? So this is the floral formula for a pisum sativum or a pea plant. Fill the chat box with the hearts. Everybody, Anushka, Bhumi, Binaya, Abhijit, Anandu, everybody. Come on. If Fabaceae family, if you are 100% is confident that any question after revision comes from this part of Fabaceae family, you will write it. After this class, you have to take down your notebook, write it and write it again and again so that you will easily get to know the examples. Okay. The examples are very, very important. Very, very important. Each of the examples is very, very important. Done? Yes. Next family is the Solanaceae family. I think Abhijit have left the session. Solanaceae family. Okay. That sh uh, root shows taproot system. I'll be telling only those important points. Okay. It, it is a potato family. Solanaceae potato is the main family. Clear potato is the main family. Yes, this is very important. This is very important. The inflorescence is cymos inflorescence. Bisexual actinomorphic. So what is it? Bisexual. Bisexual actinomorphic. Done. Is it correct? Bisexual actinomorphic. Correct. Calyx have five fused sepals. Calyx have five fused sepals. Correct. Corolla have five fused petals. Five fused petals. Andresium have five free epipetales. Andresium have five free. What do you mean by epipetales? What do you mean by epipetales? Andresium and Corolla are connected. So there is a symbol like this. Guys, are you getting the point? Right now, there will be difficulty for you to digest all these things because you are hearing this for the first time. Okay. You are hearing this for the five uh, for the first time. It's not Epipetalis. Epipetalis is not the free petals. Epipetalis means andresium connected with the petals. Andresium and petals are attached together. Clear? Gynesium is bicarpillary and syncarpus. That is gynesium is bicarpillary. Syncarpus means it is fused. Ovary is superior. Ovary is superior means underline have to be given below. Seeds are endospermic. Examples are very important. Thus, food, you will use as tomato, brinjal, potato. As spice, you will use chili. Medicine, belladonna and ashwagandha. Fumigatory, tobacco and ornamentals, petunia. So sometimes a question, this is a previous year neat MCQ question. An ornamental, an ornamental flower belonging to the family Solanaceae. That is petunia. Clear? So this is how the questions may be coming for your exam. So I'll be telling you the examples for that. Actinomorphic, bisexual, calyx 5, which are fused, corolla 5, fused, andresium 5, free, they are connected. Epipetalis condition. This is the floral diagram. Okay, this is the floral diagram. Clear look. Guys, one, two, I'll be highlighting it. So you'll be more clear with it. Look, this is one andresium. This is another andresium. Three, four, and five. Okay, this pink color indicates the andresium. And this blue color is going to indicate the calyx. Number one, that is fused with the other. It is fused with the other. It is fused with the other. It is fused with the other. And look. Look, they are attached. Look, calyx and andresium are attached. So, guys, 
a question have come in the previous NEET exams regarding the same that is a particular feature a particular feature we have discussed so many features like how, how many gynesium are there how many uh antrisium are there what are the characteristics of solanaceae plants all these things we discussed so among this features one particular feature is indicated one particular feature is indicated in the floral formula that is one particular feature is over here but it is absent over here what is that feature which you will indicate or you will represent in the floral formula but you will never represent that particular feature of the flower or the plant in the floral diagram what is that feature position of the ovary okay what is the answer position of the ovary in the floral formula you will write it hypogynous epigynous perigynous condition but in the floral diagram you will never denote whether it is a superior ovary inferior ovary okay or it is having an inferior ovary the last part of the chapter is the gyne a lily acea family okay lily acea family no commonly known as the water lily commonly known as the water lily okay and uh, we are going to study about the details about it that is the flower is bisexual and actinomorphic what do you mean by bisexual and actinomorphic condition bisexual actinomorphic guys this is number one this is number two which is the correct appropriate over here tell me one or two which is correct tell me i cannot just ask you to give me the symbol of actinomorphic right so the only method available is to, i should draw wrong and right and you have to identify that which is the correct one one or two yes one because second one percentage is used for what percentage is used for what zygomorphic here you will find perianth three plus three okay here you will find perianth so p three plus three okay andresium stamen six three plus three epi petalis what do you mean by epi petalis tell me guys tell me what is epi petalis what is epipetalis? Let me check who is going to give me the correct answer for what is epipetalis. So, not epipetalis, epitepalis. It's not epipetalis, it's epitepalis. Epitepalis. Nobody knows the answer now also, guys. Very good. The stamens are connected to the tepals. Epitepalus in nature, that is. Andresium. Again, they are also arranged like 3 plus 3. And they are connected. They are connected. Guys, everybody, have you got it? Have you everybody got it? Have everybody got this? yes so in this liliaceae family you will find bract okay in the liliaceae family you will find bract so on the beginning you will indicate the letter br okay the gynesium is tricarpillary syncarpus with a superior ovary clear examples are ornamentals tulip and gloriosa source of medicine alloy vegetable asparagus and colchin colicium auto autumn nile okay colicium autumn nile clear so these are the main three families these are the main three families which we have to study look they are bractate actinomorphic bisexual perian a3 plus 3 and gynesium guys is this floral formula correct is this floral formula correct Tell me, simply you just tell me, is this floral formula correct? Is this floral formula correct? 
Tell me yes or no. Why is it not correct? Tell me the reason for why is it not correct also. Let me check how many of you have listened in the class very properly. Tell me what is the reason that makes it wrong. Tell me, tell me fast. Very good. It is the epitepalus condition. So in the diagram, it's not indicated. That might be a printing mistake. So epitepalus. Yes, it's not epif. Yeah, epiphilus. Epiphilus or epitepalus. It's correct. Epitepalus or the other term is epiphilus. Okay. So you have to indicate a diagram like this also. Clear? So look guys, these are the perian. This is 3 plus 3. And they are all connected. Look, they are all connected. Done? Done everybody. So that marks the end of today's super amazing session. And that marks the end of the super amazing lengthy chapter. That marks the end of two things. That marks the end of the super amazing lecture. That marks the ending of the super amazing chapter of morphology as well. Tell me guys, how was the chapter morphology? Usually all the students will just tell like morphology is so difficult. Morphology is like this. I won't study morphology. How is you feeling? How are you guys feeling right now? That is after thorough revision. After thorough revision and doing questions. Will this chapter be easy for you? Have you been taught in such a way? Have you been taught in such a way? Right now you will also feel the same. It's very hard chapter. But I am asking you after thorough revision and after doing some questions. Will you be able to do this well? Will you be able to do this well or not? I just wanted to hear that. Yes. The very important just like the animal kingdom. Just it's and this chapter in animal kingdom and all are in the same basic level. That is both chapters example plays an important role in animal kingdom. Also examples play a very important role in morphology. Also example play a very important role in the neat exam. So tomorrow sharp at 7 a.m. There would be the rank booster series on this particular morphology chapter. Tomorrow, sharp at 7 a.m., Morphology Chapter Rank Booster Series is going to get there. So, I want each one of you to get prepared and just attend the session. Today itself, you must do the revision. I'm not asking you to do the entire chapter, but make sure you do the revision of the family today itself. Family of the families, description of the family today itself, you have to do and clarify any of your doubt with me today itself. What is the time, guys? What is the time? 2.48. Do you need the menti quiz? Do you need the slider quiz on this class? Or should we do the rank booster tomorrow? Which one? Everything depends upon you and your participation. Do you need the slider quiz? Or um, should we do the rank booster? Should you do the full syllabus after you get prepared? Which one? Tell me Slido or tomorrow. Tell me Slido or tomorrow. Fast, fast. Which one? Which one? You are telling only yes. I am confused. Slido or tomorrow? Tell me. Fast, fast. Yes. So tomorrow. Okay. Oh, you need Slido tomorrow. What should we do? Let me check one more. I don't know whether Slido will be working properly. What about the others? Here is a Slido quiz is over here. It's prepared. If you are interested, you we will start it right now. So I'll do the Slido quiz tomorrow. Okay. You can spend the time from now to prepare for your exam at 7. Okay, everybody have to attend the exam today itself. Don't keep it for tomorrow, day after tomorrow and all. Okay. Okay, done everybody. Done. So be prepared for the exam at 7. There is only just 20 questions. You will get only just 20 questions. Just 20 questions are there. Okay, just 20 questions. Very easy question. 
direct from the ncrt previous year questions everything so bye bye guys see you tomorrow see you tomorrow with a super amazing class bye bye and don't forget tomorrow i will be starting a brand new chapter where you all have you all attended the body fluids lecture in the morning tell me yes or no on the chat box have you all attended the body fluid chapter tell me tell me have you all what happened what happened you have to revise that go along with that that's a very simple chapter body fluids compared to the entire human physiology chapter the body fluid chapter is very very easy as compared to digestion even so please do watch it also okay and tomorrow i will be starting the chapter structural organization in animals epithelial tissue connective tissue muscular tissue neural tissue and one organism in detail which is that organism common in your home cockroach okay so tomorrow we will be discussing about the tissues after that we will be uh, discussing about the cockroach also in this chapter itself so bye bye guys see you tomorrow timing and everything will be informed in our telegram group so those who have not watched the body fluids lecture please do watch it today itself okay please do watch it today itself okay otherwise you will lose the flow of the body fluid chapter you won't be able to get it at all it's a very easy compared comparatively a very 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 simple chapter yes frog and earthworm are deleted from the neat syllabus only you have to study about the cockroach bye bye